Hey guys, welcome to Sandbox Time. It's not Timmy. It's me, the producer. In any case, have you guys ever wondered what it looks like inside these toys, these machines that I've built? Well, today I'm gonna to show you exactly what it takes to make this happen so you can have RC Brooder toys. Um, so let's go through it step by step. So you see here, this is one of the toys from Bruder. It's a Caterpillar uh, Delta track loader. And I've modified this to go from a toy that you have to push yourself and move the bucket around uh, to fully remote control. So we'll look at it from this to this. And I know you're thinking, oh my gosh, that's a lot of wires. It's totally messy. But I only did that just to show you how many wires and connections and pieces go into this toy. So I'll go through each part and then we'll try to understand it and put it all back together. Let's first start and talk about what propels this thing. Well, how does this move? Well, there's two motors in here. One right here on the right side of the machine and one down here on the left side of the machine. And these are two little motors. Uh, they have a 90 degree bend in them, or a 90 degree turn, so that there's a drive sprocket here, and a drive sprocket here on the front. As you can see, inside here there's a cog wheel. And this is 3D printed, and I got it off uh, of a great builder uh, Stein I believe is his name um, I'll put a link in the description it's uh, off of the RC Sparks uh, studio forums and uh, you can go and download this uh, or you can even buy it already made and then that way you can just uh, put it on but anyways that's the propulsion side of things well we can't just put that in there because the toy comes with a lot of pieces of plastic that are there for rigidity and so we want to make sure that we remove all those things um, to make room for all the electronic components here. So let's go on to the next piece here. We'll move all these wires out of the way and we'll look at just this piece right now, okay? So what we have here is a control board. This is a Sabertooth 2x5 uh, and what it does is it takes the positive and negative wires from the motors and we connect them on each side and then we have these three we have these three servo wires and of the three servo wires we're only going to use two and the ones we're going to use are let's make sure this is the right one this forward one and there's this other one here it's the turn one this other one it's uh not required for what we're doing but there's three there we're going to use these two and these will connect to our receiver all right, so we're using a Spectrum AR610 receiver here. Um, great little piece of kit, but doesn't necessarily mean you have to use this. You can use any other receiver and uh, transmitter that you have or controller. And then at the back of this, we have power wires. Now these power wires are gonna be connected to the BEC or battery eliminator current. And what that does is it tells us that the power that's coming to here will drive this and will give it just enough power to run it. And then it'll send the right amount of current to the receiver so that the servos can work because the servos don't run on the same amount of power as this. And I believe this is running at 11.1, um, whereas the servos only need six uh, volts. So, uh, that's what, why, why we need to have it, or else you can't do both at the same time and it causes problems. We just don't want to have that. So a BEC is required and that BEC is connected and we've had to splice into the wires here. So there's three red wires and three black wires. Um, we also have a switch. So that's why this all goes to here. It goes to our switch inside here to turn it on and off, right? So that's why we have that. And then we're using one of these connectors, Deans. Sorry, G, uh, JST. So we'll be using a JST connector here to connect to the battery, right? So I'm using a Gen's Ace 1300 milliamp 11.1 .1 volt battery. It's got a JST connector on it. 
and that's what powers this baby. So we'll connect it here. Everything else is powered. Uh, then we just need servos to run the servo here in the bucket. So there's a servo here, as you can see. Servo connected to the bucket so we can curl. There's a lot of hot glue here just to make sure this is stuck so it doesn't move around and get frayed. And the second servo is underneath the hood here. And this servo powers the rear arm, or the, the lifting arm, right? So we have a uh, the servo connected to this rod here, which lifts this arm up and down. All right, so that's the guts of it. Um, we tuck everything inside, put it all nice and neat, and then we have our toy ready to run. Hope you guys like that. Uh, if you have any questions and want to learn how to build this, let me know. There's a lot of cutting that needs to be done on the inside of this. There's also one thing that I forgot to mention and should be mentioned. I've used a couple of 3D printed parts from uh, one of the guys on the uh, forums. From uh, I think his name is Stein. There's one back here under the bucket as well to hold this servo. And there's another 3D printed part here that holds this whole assembly for the rear servo. So those are the only ones I've used. Um, everything else has just been cut and put into place. I have a, a, a threaded rod that goes through here to keep this whole assembly together. This wheel here just moves on its own and so does the rear idler. Uh, we've used screws here in the back just to hold this whole uh, assembly together. But everything else is all brooder. Uh, again guys, if you really enjoy this stuff and you want to see more of how these things are built, I'll do another build video with just the uh, receiver and how to set this up. This uh, Sabertooth controller here already comes uh, pre-configured to understand what to do with the tracks to move them, but you're going to have to come in here and possibly reverse one of the, uh, the channels. Uh, and then I'll show you how to get this guy to stay in the middle because they don't. This typically is designed for aircraft or helicopter and it'll stay all the way down or up but there's a spring in here that you can adjust so that it gives you that tension if you want to drive from here and then do the bucket and arm on this side here. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Leave some comments. If you have any questions let me know in the comment section. Thanks guys and hopefully you can subscribe because there's going to be more videos coming out.